Hi guys, selling in and shit. Oh, you're in for a treat, guys. You're in for a big treat. You're going to see the finale of the murder story. I finally got my act together, got it sorted, and filmed it. Put some music to it. <laughs> and you won't believe how many retakes I've had to do on this. It's just phenomenal. You'll hear me laughing in the film because I'll, I'll say something and I'll start laughing. I was killing myself laughing. I had to do several retakes of each scene. <laughs> I'd either fluff my words, start swearing because something go wrong, or the model would fall over. Oh, Jesus, it was unreal. So I've done my best. And remember, I'm not Pixar, I'm not, <laughs> it's not a professional setup. I've done the best I can. I've had no help. I've had to do it all myself. Uh, as for the script, well, that was a three o'clock in the morning job that I was thinking about it and I wrote some notes down and that didn't go to plan. <laughs> so I just, <laughs> I just make it up on the cuff, you know, just as it happens. And now the computer's playing up, but there you go, that's another thing. So I've done the best I can because I've had to film it, I've had to edit it, put music to it, produce it, uh, be an actor, oh, everything. Narrator, it's, it, gets, it gets out of hand, I tell you. And it's took days and days, it's working at last, it's took days and days. <laughs> to try and do it because I, I'd film a bit and I'd have to go back and like, redo it and then oh, I'd start laughing or I'd get annoyed or I'd swear at it or whatever. So, and eventually I've come up with something that's acceptable and uh, I hope you enjoy it, that's all. It took ages doing it on the editing, ages and ages, finding the right piece of music to, to, to slip into the scene and and then you'd click something to try and save it and you'd wipe it off and you'd have to start all again. Oh God, it was crazy stuff. So without further ado, we'll get into the film. At the start of the film, there's a couple of trains running, just to show you the PD ports and the pink one running, uh, and the sound on a GBRF. That only takes a couple of minutes. And then we move into the movie. Okay? Just enjoy. I, I, I'd never stop laughing, honest to God. It's unbelievable. So, <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye for now, bye. Busy day at Dragon Junction today.
as you can see, the GBRF 6731. Just done a quick uh, driver changeover, and uh, she's about to depart with the nuclear flasks. there's been a development in the murder inquiry this is a couple of months down the line now after a lot of inquiries have gone on and they, uh, if you remember there was a murder in the churchyard there was a dodgy guy on a bike it turned out to be an assassin but got assassinated by a class 68 at the level crossing and uh, the vicar's wife was a bit of a flasher. She had a, a fetish for taking her clothes off. <laughs> anyway, so they're all back at the police station for a meeting. And uh, Vera's arrived. There she is, just behind the Land Rover there, in her famous Land Rover. And the press has arrived, doing the interviews as they do making up stories and even Austin Powers is turned up with his little sidekick Miss Humperlot she likes to write things down for him <laughs> so at the moment they're having a meeting about the uh, murder case story and I think it's about to come to a conclusion. They have found some DNA evidence at the site, which has now been processed. So, with Vera turning up to do the arresting, and good old Austin Powers and Miss Humpelot to do the backup. And as you can see, there's a few police officers kicking about here to keep control of the crowds such as so let's move to the uh, murder site now at this point of the proceedings they've all rushed back to the church and uh, the press is in so As 
you can see, the cameraman's set up. Looks like Jerry on Big Jet TV. And then <laughs> they found somebody, an eyewitness, they were interviewing the eyewitness there. As you can see, the press has turned up. Maybe an ambulance if needed. Police are in attendance. Let's have a look what's behind the trees. Oh, I can see Austin's powers care. We better move position. Oh, Vera's here as well. And the local SWAT team. Oh my god, there's got the spot here. But there's uh, Austin Powers and Miss Humpelot. Where's Vera? Oh, there's Vera. Oh, who's this? Oh, they've seemed to have woken up Susanna, the local vampire. Oh dear, dear, dear. So Vera calls out to Susanna, the local vampire, and says, It's all right, pet. So she says, Susanna says, What's all the commotion? I'm trying to sleep here. So Vera says, Everything's okay, pet. You go back to sleep in your box. I'll come back later and have a chat. Okay, pet. Just a funny thing, why is the grave diggers smiling? Are they able to see something we can't? Maybe they can see something different. So one says to the other, What's all this about, Bob? I don't know, Bob. What do you think, Bob? And they're all called Bob. And they're all Bobs, short of a six pack. Maybe that's why they laugh a lot like me. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's move down to the action. Hopefully. And as you can see, the SWAT team is now in position. There's one there. There's two behind the grave there. There's another one there and one lying on the floor. So the SWAT team is in position. And these two guys are Interpol. And they're trying to coax out the vicar from the church. And the tension is building. And as you can see, there's no movement from the door of the church. And the guys on the tannoy keep repeating. Come on, Vicar, give, give yourself up. Still no movement. And five minutes goes by. And suddenly the Vicar turns up. And he's got his wife as a hostage. Not sure about his hand, though. Anyway, he's got the wife as a hostage. <laughs> You're not taking me, guys, says the vicar. Give yourself up and nobody will get hurt, says the guys on the tannoy. And then a few moments later, 
another guy comes out and he's armed as well. He says, you're not taking me, guys. Be the last thing that happens. So at this point of the proceedings, Vera, uh, her sidekick, moves up to position and she's shouting to him, Look Peck, just give yourself up, nobody's going to get hurt. You're not leaving here without us taking you in. You're surrounded. You've got no chance. I am not going, he says. I'll take the wife out first. She'll go first. We can't have that, says Vera. And then he says, it's just... So the vicar shouts back, back off guys or the wife gets it. I'll take her out. Then I'll take you lot out. Come on, pet, you know you're surrounded, you can't get away with it. Even with your co-partner there. And there's a pause. And he's just shot the two Interpol police. And Vera's unprotected now. So the SWAT team takes over and let's rip. And unfortunately, all three of them are dead. Now the two guys on the floor from Interpol, they were wounded but not seriously. The vicar and his partner, they're taken out. And the wife, unfortunately, they did not survive. So, the conclusion was, the vicar was the murderer because he was a spy along with the other guy, his co-conspirator, doing espionage down the docks. And the couple had died, they were undercover private detectives and they got too close to knowing things so the vicar took them out. Unknowing there was an assassin coming to take the vicar out, but he met an unfortunate end the level crossing because somebody recognised him so that's the conclusion of the murder story it was the vicar all along now Vera's got to explain all this to Susanna the vampire I'm sure she can do that. So all we gotta do now is clean up the mess and find another vicar. So hope you enjoyed that people. All the best for the new year. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye for now. Bye.